Hello, my name is Joshua Brown from the Aptitude Testing website, howtobecome.com, and in this tutorial, I will teach you how to pass a nursing dosage calculation test. So if you have any kind of nursing calculation test coming up, whether it's for an international healthcare organization or a national one, such as the NHS or a private healthcare company, then please make sure you stick around to the end because I will help you to pass. To achieve that goal, this is what I will cover. I'll break down the different types of nursing dosage calculation test questions that will come up during your assessment test that I strongly recommend you prepare for. I'll also provide you with step-by-step -step instructions on how to tackle nursing test questions. I'll also give you essential tips to help you pass the nursing calculation tests at the very first attempt. And finally, I'll also give you example questions for you to try live on screen. And just very quickly, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I want to help you pass your assessment tests and I can only do that if you're subscribed. And please don't forget to hit that like button because this tells me you find these tutorials useful. Please also remember that none of the information contained in this video constitutes as actual medical advice or legal advice. The content is purely here to help you understand medical calculations and it in no way means the dosages are accurate. Okay, let's get started with the first nursing calculation style aptitude test questions I recommend you prepare for. So the first question type is a nice easy one to warm up with. And that is, a patient has been prescribed 75 milligrams of tramadol each day. How many milligrams will the patient take each week? Is it A, 75 mg, B, 375 mg, C, 525 mg, D, 1050 mg, or is it 1500 mg? Now, when dealing with numerical questions like these, first work out the key information that you need. You can see here, I've highlighted that in bold throughout the question for you, 75 milligrams each day. Now to get the answer, we simply need to multiply 75 for 75 milligrams of tramadol by seven as there are seven days in the week. So 75 times by seven is 525. Therefore, the answer is 525 mg. So the correct answer option was answer C. Now let's try a question for yourself. Please put your answer to question two in the comments section below the video for marking. Thank you. So question two, a patient has been prescribed fexofenadine for their allergies. They have to initially take 180 mg dose daily for one week and then for the second week, 120 mg dose daily. How many milligrams will the patient have taken after the first two weeks? Is it A, 840 mg, B, 1260 mg, C, 1800 mg, D, 2100 mg, or is it E, 2520 mg? You have 20 seconds on the timer starting now. How did you get on? Please put your answer in the comment section below where I will mark it for you and provide you with feedback. Okay, let's move on to another nursing calculation test question. And this time it's gonna have a slight twist to it. So question three, a patient has been prescribed 50 milligrams of tramadol each day. How many milligrams will the patient take after five days? Is it A, 250 grams, B, 0 0.25 grams, C, 25 grams, D, 350 grams, or is it E, 0.35 grams? Notice that the answer options here are in grams, not milligrams. Therefore, you need to convert milligrams to grams because this is an essential part of the role. Now, during the nurse calculation test, with mass, you will generally deal in grams, milligrams, micrograms and sometimes even nanograms. Now the general rule of thumb here when converting is that you'll either multiply or divide the original figure by 1000 to get the required value. Now the general rule of thumb when converting is that you'll either multiply or divide the original figure by 1000 to get the required value. 
For example, to get grams to milligrams, we would times one gram by a thousand, and that would give us a thousand milligrams. And for one liter, one liter equals 1000 milliliters, e.g. one times 1000, again, is 1000 milliliters. If we had two liters, it'd be 2000 milliliters. And again, 1500 milligrams would equal 1 1.5 grams. Or for volume, 2300 milliliters would equal 2.3 liters. So you can see these are very simple calculations to get there, but they can look a bit confusing and the question can sometimes trick you out if you're not careful and look to see if the unit differs in the answer option to that proposed in the question. So a top tip here is to convert to a lower unit, you multiply by 1000 and to convert to a high unit, you generally divide by 1000. Therefore, the answer to question three can be worked out by doing the following calculation. We can do 50 mg times by five, that equals 250 milligrams because we're doing it over a five day course. We then divide our 250 by 1000, which gives us 0.25 grams. So the correct answer option was answer option B. Well done if you got that right yourself. Now it's your turn to tackle a question just like this yourself. So please put your answer to question four in the comment section below the video for marking. Thank you. Question four, a patient has been prescribed the following medication. How many milligrams in total will the patient take in 10 days? Is it A, 5,050 mg, B, 4,750 mg, C, 4,900 mg, D, 5,600 mg, or E, 5,650 mg. You have 20 seconds on the timer starting now. Okay, let's move on to the next nursing drug dosage calculation question, which is, a patient has been prescribed 2.5 grams of a blood thinning medication. The stock tablets are 200 mg each. How many tablets should you prescribe to the patient? A, 11 tablets, B, 13 tablets, C, 13.5 tablets, D, 12 tablets, or E, 12.5 tablets. Now this one is a little trickier, but you just need to put into practice the unit conversion steps that we've taken before. Okay, you have 20 seconds on the timer starting now. How did you get on? Let me know your answer in the comment section below and I'll get back to you with feedback. Okay, let's now take a look at an IV flow rates question type. Now a lot of time in hospital, patients will be placed on intravenous infusion lines to control the flow of medication or fluids into the system. This device is known as a volumetric pump or infusion controller. Now when the IV line is set up, the pump or controller will be set to a rate which converts the fluids into fine drops before delivering the fluid to the patient. Now during your nurse calculation test, you will come across questions which test your knowledge on flow rates per hour and per minute. Now this first question is based on flow rates per hour. So the question is, over the next five hours, a patient is to receive half a litre of fluids. What is the flow rate per hour? Is it A, 5 milliliters per hour, B, 50 milliliters per hour, C, 25 milliliters per hour, D, 75 milliliters per hour, or E, 100 milliliters per hour? Now to establish the flow rate per hour, luckily it's a relatively simple calculation. All you have to do is divide the volume by the duration. So in this example, that would be 500 divided by five, 
because we have half a liter of fluids, which we know is 500 milliliters. So 500 milliliters divided by five, five hours, equals 100 milliliters per hour. So the correct answer is answer option E, 100 milliliters per hour. Now it's your turn. Remember, please put your answer to question seven in the comment section below the video for marking. Thank you. Question seven. Over the next 10 hours, a patient is set to receive two liters of fluids. What is the flow rate per hour? Is it A, 150 milliliters per hour? B, 225 milliliters per hour? C, 200 milliliters per hour? D, 180 milliliters per hour? Or is it E, 140 milliliters per hour? There's 20 seconds on the timer starting now. Now don't go anywhere, make sure you stick around as I have plenty more questions and answers to give you, but when you're ready, click that link in the top right hand corner and head to my website howtobecome.com where you can get access to hundreds of nursing calculation test preparation style questions including the ones we're covering right now plus the fully worked answers and strategies to pass each question type to make you the standout candidate. Okay, let's move on to the next question type, which is questions based on working out the flow rate per minute. So question eight is this. A patient requires 400 milliliters over 15 minutes. What value should you set the infusion controller to? A, 800 milliliters per hour. B, 250 milliliters per hour. C, 1,200 milliliters per hour. D, 1,400 milliliters per hour, or E, 1,600 milliliters per hour. Okay, the process to work out the flow rate per minute is this. Step one, you need to work out the minutes as a decimal. So to do this, we'll do 15 divided by 60, which gives us 0 0.025. The reason why we divide it by 60 is because there's 60 minutes in one hour. So step two is to divide the volume by 0.25. So in this case, it's 400 milliliters. So we do 400 divided by 0 0.25, and that gives us a total of 1,600. So the correct answer option is answer option E. Now I want you to have a go at this yourself. So question nine is this. A patient is to be given 375 milliliters of medication over 45 minutes. What is the flow rate using an infusion pump? Is it A, 450 milliliters an hour, B, 300 milliliters per hour, C, 400 milliliters per hour, D, 500 milliliters per hour, or is it E, 250 milliliters per hour? Okay, 20 seconds on the timer starts now. Okay, let's try another one. But this time, let's take out a question based on working out the calculation by body weight. At times, you'll be required to prescribe drugs based on the patient's body weight. This is quite common in children, for example, and fortunately, it's also a very simple calculation. But first, let's take a look at the question. So question 10 is this. A patient weighs 68 kilograms. The stock medication you have is 45 milligrams per kg per day. For a single dose, what should you prescribe the patient? A, 680 milligrams, B, 1,030 milligrams, C, 360 milligrams, D, 4,500 milligrams, or should you do E, 5,000 milligrams? Now to answer this, all you need to do is multiply 68 by 45. So 68 by 45 equals 3060. Therefore, the required dose 
is 3060 mg. It's a really simple calculation. And a top tip here is make sure you read the scenario thoroughly as you may be asked to split the amount into multiple doses or multiply the doses per day. That's how they make this question a lot more tricky. So the correct answer should have been C, 3060 mg. Let's take a look at sample question for you to try. So here we go. You have a patient who requires medication based on their body weight. Your patient weighs 45 kilograms. The dose strength on hand is 5 mg per kilogram. The patient requires three of these doses each day. What is the total dosage for the day? Is it A, 67 mg, B, 455 mg, C, 675 mg, D, 525 mg, or is it E, 625 mg? So 20 seconds on the timer starts now. Okay, let's take another look at another question just like that one. You have a patient who requires medication based on their body weight. Your patient weighs 75 kilograms. The dose strength on hand is 10 mg per kilogram. The patient requires this dose to be split into three equal doses. What is the dosage for each dose? Is it A, 240 mg, B, 250 mg, C, 300 mg, D, 190 mg, or is it E, 180 mg? 20 seconds on the timer starts now. Now the next thing to do is please make sure you click the button in the top right hand corner of this video right now and head through to my website howtobecome.com where you can get access to hundreds of nursing test preparation style questions and fully worked answers to each question. They range in difficulty from easy to very challenging to ensure you are fully prepared and you can literally have online access within two minutes from now and it's guaranteed to help you prepare effectively for your next medical test and also, more importantly, put you ahead of the competition. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please don't forget to subscribe as I'm on a mission to help as many people as possible pass their aptitude tests and job interviews. And I can only do that if you are subscribed. Please also hit that like button as that encourages me to make more videos just like this one. If you have any questions regarding medical aptitude tests, please feel free to put these in the comment section below where I will get back to you. And finally, if you'd like to connect with me on LinkedIn, I've put my LinkedIn link in the description below. It's always great to connect with like-minded professionals such as yourself. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you all the best for your assessment. Have a great day.